New American firepower heading towards Somalia. Six more helicopters arrived today, and NBC News has learned that four American warships with 2,200 Marines on board are now in the Persian Gulf. They could be off Somalia's shores by the weekend. In Somalia, there is no let-up in U.S.-led attacks targeting that nation's dominant warlord, Mohammed Farrar Adid, and his fighters. Air and ground strikes have shaken the capital since Saturday, hitting a variety of targets. Some relief shipments have been stopped. We get more now from NBC's Keith Miller, who is in Mogadishu. American air power once again supplied the United Nations with military muscle. Cobra gunships conducted the first daylight air raid earlier today, but the results were questionable. It did cause pandemonium as pedestrians ran for cover. But the target, a multiple rocket launcher, appeared to be a relic incapable of being fired. Tragically, one missile missed the target. A woman was carried away with severe head wounds and reportedly died in the hospital. Other U.S. helicopters buzzed an anti-UN, anti-American demonstration. But it's clear the pressure on warlord Mohammed Adid to turn over his weapons will not let up. The last several nights we've engaged and destroyed a number of targets. In essence, we are, uh, we are forcefully disarming that faction. And Adid is apparently not missing the message. At a news conference, he may have appeared defiant, but the talk was of reconciliation. We would like to reaffirm our willingness and a strong desire to cooperate with UN in promoting peace and reconciliation in Somalia. What was launched as Operation Restore Hope six months ago by American troops appears to have come full circle. This operation is being called Restore Normality, and again, American force is being relied upon to give it meaning. More than 4,000 American military personnel are in the country, and they remain on maximum alert. Any retaliation against them will be met by overwhelming force, and reinforcements, if needed, could come from the Marine Landing Group. Keith Miller, NBC News, Mogadishu. Now to that other hot spot in the world, Bosnia. The UN today recommended sending an additional 7,500 troops to beef up protection of those battered Muslim enclaves. The six so-called UN safe havens. Those areas and others continue to take a terrific pounding, no matter what the UN says or does. NBC's Rick Davis tonight. Sarajevo, more shelling on the capital of what little is left of Bosnia. One UN official compared Bosnia to a pack of wild dogs feeding on a corpse. These are the victims of Serbian gunners who fired on a Muslim funeral Saturday. Eight mourners were killed. But even the horror here pales to the Serbian siege around another city. Hundreds have died in Garajdik. A hospital was hit last night. A radio operator says it is a mixture of dead bodies, bricks and plaster. And now old allies have turned on each other. It began in Mostar when Croats decided to grab as much of Bosnia as they could. The Muslim soldiers went on the attack, driving the Croats back from conquered territory. The Croats then stopped this relief convoy to the mostly Muslim city of Tuzla. Drivers were pulled from the trucks. At least eight were killed. The convoy was looted during the night. Tonight in London, the Muslim president of Bosnia urged Britain to end the arms embargo. Elia Itzabegovic said, without weapons, the Bosnian army will collapse. The West has done nothing to defend us, nor allowed us to defend ourselves. It is a plea heard before and rejected. A Western diplomat told me a composer should begin to write a requiem for Bosnia. Rick Davis, NBC News, London.